That was a pretty cool opening, huh? Hey everyone, welcome back to Game Room Theater. Today we're taking a deep dive into the world of high fidelity audio with the Arundel Sound 1723 THX speakers. And guys, I'm gonna be going into a whole lot of detail. Just look at this. At, with this upgrade, it just simply takes my breath away. So as beautiful as they look, let's find out if they live up to the hype. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a lot of specifications and detail on these with my impressions and how I feel about it after owning them for the last six months. Let me get right into unboxing and show you guys how everything is packaged. And in preparation, I have removed my Polk RTA 9s and I'll be sharing some impressions comparing those. This is how everything came on a skid. It was nicely packaged, but guys, brace yourself. This all weighs a ton. I think this was over a 500 pound shipment. And I tried to be a hero in my excitement trying to move some things and I threw out my back, so be very careful. Now in the back, I've got three 1723 THX towers. And guys, these weigh about 110 pounds each. And I also have four of the 1723S surrounds. This is what you would call the bed layer speakers. And lastly, I've got four 1961 heights. This would be for the Atmos layer up above you. So guys, later in the video, I'll discuss why I went with this setup and this layout for my 11 channels versus keeping it all in their THX line. Okay, let's start by first unboxing the smallest out of these, and this is the 1961 Heights model. And the reason why, guys, I didn't stay with the 1723 family for my Heights is because those are really, really large for my particular space. And in speaking with the Arendelle reps, they had indicated that the 1961 line being smaller and a slimmer profile will work just fine, complementing the tonal balance of the rest of the system. So guys, uh, it does handle up to 180 watts and I do recommend an amplifier with these. And that's how I run all of my speakers, by the way. You can run these off of a receiver, but they really, really open up once you give them dedicated power. And uh, it does have a five and a half inch woofer and the tweeter is a 28 millimeter. So what I got is the black matte finish, but you can get this in white matte as well. Now let's get right into the big boy here. This is the 1723 THX Towers. This whole box guys, relatively speaking, looks like the size of a coffin, not to be morbid. And inside, look at this, very, very nicely packaged. And here are some of the dimensions. And keep in mind, guys, this has got four 8-inch woofers and handles up to 500 watts of power. So it takes a serious amount of juice. It is at 4 ohms, rather sensitive uh, at 92 dB. Look at this. They even put in gloves at this thing just to handle it properly. And it does come with a nice magnetic grill. But with all the woofers and the beauty of this thing, I'd rather have it exposed. But of course, if you've got little kids and pets and things, you probably want to keep that protected. And finally out, these are majestic guys just look at it i don't find any plastic anywhere including the arendelle emblem and if you want to decouple the speaker off of the floor you do get a very high quality spikes kit as well these are offered in two colors either black or white and in a satin finish or a gloss finish and i preferred the satin finish because i didn't want the speakers to be too reflective now in the back of the speaker you've got three vents this allows for versatility on how you want to run this speaker and depending on the size of your room how many subs you've got and how you tune things. I highly recommend experimenting with what works best. I mean, you can leave it sealed and it'll cut off at 55 hertz for a low, or you can go as low as 34 hertz. Also in the back, a very refined finish with these high-end connections. They're rhodium plated copper terminals. And lastly, the bed layer speakers. This is the 1723 Surround S THX, and the S is particularly there because these are smaller and by smaller, the only difference between the main line and the S is the fact that the woofers are 6.5 inches instead of eight inches. Everything else is all the same, all still perfectly timber matched. I just have limited space in my room and this is why I chose the S line. By the way, I run these with the four inch drivers disabled because I've got four of these and I don't need that sound to spread, but you can experiment with that. Same high quality interconnects in the back. So guys, I had to put this epic shot in. This is just so beautiful assembled together. I left it like this for a day. I was angsty to get these installed and hear them and have it all calibrated, but it just looks so gorgeous like this. 
And guys, the build quality is really a standout feature. The towers are robust and these are like very well crafted. The surround S speakers are designed for optimal dispersion and the height speakers are perfect for adding that overhead dimension to your sound. Now, before I get into my impressions after having them for the last few months, let me give you some background on Arendelle Sound. You may not have heard of them before, but they have the DNA of some very well-known folks in the industry. And these are a premium Norwegian speaker brand. They originate from the city of Arendelle in Norway. And the company has quickly become a significant player in the high fidelity audio market. Uh, with their Scandinavian design principles, making them a, basically a really popular choice amongst audiophiles and home cinema enthusiasts. And I've been seeing a lot of buzz from people uh, that have bought these and done reviews on them. So guys, everything in the room is perfectly calibrated. I actually spent a few days. I've got four subs in this room. I also run a mini DSP, so everything is tuned perfectly for the way the room responds. And everything is connected to an Anthem AVM70 preprocessor, which I have then also connected to a couple of Emotiva XPA5 amplifiers, which puts out 200 watts of clean power to each of these 11 speakers. Keep in mind though that these are built in China. I know what people think when they hear the C word. They think it won't be quality and poor craftsmanship, but exactly the opposite is true. And I opened 11 of these boxes. Each one was just perfect. So let me talk about the surround bed layer. And guys, this was an absolute game changer for me, coming from the Pulks previously. So what I mean by that is when I'm watching an action scene, there's something happening in the front and the sound travels to the back and it's say it's like an explosion, rather loud. So what would previously happen is my, my previous surround speakers not being as robust would start distorting at a certain level. So I had to actually tune them down quite a bit and uh, cut them off at a much higher frequency. But with these now, these all s handle the, the power that I give them and I I'll get a consistent sound in the room everywhere. So say something is panning from the front to the back of the room, it is very, very seamless. And because everything is also timber matched, it, it really flows and it's a, it's a very convincing sound. So once again, for the Dolby Atmos layer, I chose the 1961 height. And this was because, as you can see, my ceiling height is rather low. I mean, I've got eight foot ceiling height. And going with their standard 1723 line, it was just gonna be way too much of an overhang. And like I said, talking to their reps, this was a good solution. And they said that it would be fairly uh, transparent in terms of going uh, going with another line uh, on the ceiling and that turned out to be very true the Atmos I would say is probably the least least used channel in your typical movie listening session they don't get used as often obviously as the front stage so even then I've I haven't had a situation where I felt that they were underpowered or under delivering the sound stayed just as consistent as my bed layer surrounds. So before I talk about my front stage, the three 1723 THX towers, guys, a lot of times you'll see lots of videos where there's, there's audio demos. Not that I'm knocking anybody, but there'll be audio demos on YouTube and they'll be playing them for 30 seconds, a minute. You know, sure, you get some impressions and things, but I'm not gonna do that. And I'm simply not gonna do that because there's so many variables. My room is gonna be different than your room. And I've got different subwoofers in here. Sure, I can disconnect it and play one speaker at a time. You know, how far I'm measuring from, what device I'm measuring from itself. There's, and you're gonna be watching it probably on your cell phone, playing it off of your cell phone speakers. And there's compression with YouTube. There's so many variables. So guys, I'm gonna skip that. If you do wanna see that, there's, there's, there's a few other videos that uh, uh, you can check out. Now, having said that, why do I have three towers instead of a center channel that they do sell like this? My personal preference was I wanted it to feel like an actual movie theater where you don't see the front stage. It's just a shame hiding these because these are beautiful and I'll show you guys uh, later on what it looks like with my backlighting. But 
I wanted actual sound to come exactly from where it's supposed to come in the center part of the screen for a center channel. So that is why I, I wanted the front stage that, and it's ideal to have your left, right, and center channel to be the same. Also, my front stage is towed in slightly. I've experimented quite a bit to have them a bit wider, but I find it a lot more precise and clear at my main listening position. And the tweeter height was just perfect at the seated, seated position. These land at ear level. As for audio quality wise, guys, I know there's huge risks to take. This is like buying a car. You don't buy a car without test driving it. So how do you buy these? I mean, they don't sell these in stores you can only buy them online direct which perhaps saves a bit on pricing but that is a big risk right you're you're buying these sight unseen and unheard so to help with that and to help minimize risk you can basically buy these have them in your home for 60 days you don't like it you can return it now as for my impressions from music listening perspective I do listen to music in stereo mode and even with the subs off. And guys, the level of clarity, I was moved to tears almost, listening to some of my classics and favorites, hearing things that I haven't heard before with the level of precision and crispness that I'm not used to. And these speakers, by the way, guys, they, they have a very uh, normalized tone. So I don't find them fatiguing to my ears at, at all. Like some of the other brands that I've tested out, they will be very tiring after a certain number of minutes listening to them. Now the only minor, minor regret I have is these beauties are hidden behind an acoustically transparent screen. And shout out to my buddy, Youth Man, who gave me this idea. Uh, I basically put a rope LED lighting strip and this it allowed me to basically reveal these speakers behind the acoustically transparent screen. So when I'm not watching anything, I run it with the backlighting on so that I get a silhouette, kind of like the whole IMAX scene. If you guys remember, they, they'll, they'll turn on lights behind the screen. And I really like the look of it and I like the silhouettes of all the speakers showing up. Well guys, as for cons, I really don't have anything to talk about. Pricing wise, these are I'd say fairly priced. They're comp they compete in a bracket, in my opinion, with very high-end audio uh, speakers. And when you look at it from that perspective, th there is great value in these. So I hope you guys consider looking at Arundel Sound. And I've got a link to them in my bio. And I'll be sharing some further information and listening tests for those that may find it valuable in shorter videos that I'll be uploading soon. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this review, hit the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next one.